So here we have one of our split samples that we split over at the breakdown station um, through our riffles. We're going to perform a minus 200 wash. The minus 200 wash is one of the most important things for a geotechnical engineer. It's going to tell us how much silt and clay. It's not going to tell us which ones are in this material, but it's going to tell us how many of them are. We're going to wash them in this minus 200 screen, and any material that goes through this screen is going to be considered a silt or a clay. The amount of clay will be uh, quantified in another test that we have for the plasticity index. For this one, we're going to place it in our bowl, and we're going to wet it. Some materials and some different, some other test methods, they require a soak time. They'll require soap, um, something to aid in, um, in separating the finer particles from the coarser particles. Here in Phoenix, we don't have a whole lot of clays. We do have clays. Um, so typically we don't need to do a whole lot of soaking on our samples. We're gonna add water to aid in the separation of the particles from the fine to the coarse. Kind of give it a stir without degrading any of the material. I'm just lightly using my fingers in there to break them up, move them around, and bring the finer particles, the minus 200s, into suspension. We're gonna decant that over another screen that will catch any of the other materials that might fall through that we're not trying to test. And we're gonna repeat this process until we've washed this material clean and we don't have any more particles suspended in the water. It's important to maintain all your material and all of your sample, you don't want to be getting it on your fingers and having it fall into your sink because you no longer have a representative material. You're changing it by artificially losing material. So we're trying to be as careful as we can to make sure that we retain all the material that's been split for the sample. Any material lost will be considered a loss through the bottom of the screen is going to be artificially considered as a silt or a clay um, at the end of the day. At this point, we're pretty clean on our sample. I'm going to move the material back into the pan and then we're gonna wash the, the fraction that has fallen out or been decanted into our minus 200 screen. Be sure to decant over our screen in case we lose anything. Check our top screen for any materials. We had about one in there. And then we have material retained on here and we're going to wash that and make sure that we get those 200s through the screen. All of that that's washing out, you can see the turbidity in the water. It's not perfectly clear. That's because we have the 200s, the silts and the clays are washing through that. We're gonna wash this until it's clear and be certain that we've separated all the silts and the clays from any of the sands that will be retained on this 200 screen. The 200 screen is 75 microns. Um, it's really fine. I think it's about as fine, if not finer than a human hair. So a clay particle and a silt, a clay particle is microscopic. 
a silt particle. You can see silt particles to some degree, but anything smaller than 75 microns, the human eye is really not going to be able to end up identify any individual grains. We're going to check to see if our water's clear. Looks like we're right about there. We're going to go ahead and move the sample. We'll return it to the other material that we had washed. Again, any material that had passed the number four screen when we broke it down and is retained on the 200, that portion of um, material is going to be considered a sand. And again, we'll decant that just so it'll dry faster in the oven. And we'll do it over our screen just so we don't lose any material if it does happen. All right, we have our washed minus 200 and we're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna dry it back and then we'll perform our gradation on our fine sieve.